day of the Lord will come. This is part three, and today we want to discuss prayer. Praying to God is very important, and it's important that we communicate with, with the Father every day. But more important than praying to the Lord, we want to understand how we should pray unto Him. Because sometimes we'll pray, but we're not praying according to His will. And the Lord wants us to pray according to His will. Sometimes we, we stand in the way of God with the prayers that we pray. Uh, maybe sometimes not meaning to and, and unknowingly, but if we don't pray according to His will, um, then we uh, stand in jeopardy of praying against or standing in the way of the Lord. The scripture says in, in the Gospels that Jesus said, When ye pray, believe that whatsoever ye ask, ye will receive. But we're also told in the book of 1 John that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So this is what we want to discuss today. When we pray, are we praying according to the will of God? Or are we praying according to our will? You know, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he gave them the model prayer. And everything in that prayer was not a selfish prayer, but it was uh, a prayer that was in line with the will of God. I mean, he started off by saying, you know, he given honor to the Father and said, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we want to know how to pray when we pray to the Father. There are certain things in the scripture that Jesus Christ himself has set into effect. And there's nothing that we can do to change what the Lord has already established and ordained to happen in the earth. Sometimes we'll pray, Lord, let there be peace throughout the land. But the Lord said that there will be wars and rumors of wars. So there will not be a perfect peace in this earth until the Lord Jesus comes to set up his kingdom. So if we're, play, if we're praying for worldwide peace, that is not a prayer that the Lord is going to answer. Peace will only be established when Jesus Christ comes to set up his kingdom on this earth. Now, when the scripture says that we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, what is the Lord saying there? What he is saying is that when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we are praying that those Jews who do not know Christ will come to know him as their Messiah. Jerusalem will not have peace until they come to faith in Messiah Jesus. He told them, he said, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, how often would I have uh, gathered you under my wings as a hen gathers her chicks. He said, but you wouldn't allow me. He said, until they say, Baruch, Abbas, Bishem, Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Until they say that, and they will, then there will be peace in Jerusalem. I want to begin uh, by reading the book of 2 Timothy, uh, chapters 3, 1 through 5, as we speak on what Paul uh, was telling, telling us that, that in the last days that there would be perilous times. He said, but this, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come will come. We can't pray that away because Jesus said they will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, heady, or headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So here we hear, here we see Paul giving us a, a warning, an exhortation, to let us know how the hearts of men will be. And the character of men will be as we walk through the end times. And we shouldn't think it a strange thing. 
because we, we are already being warned. And when we know how the character of man will be, we'll be more better equipped to cope with a lot of things that will happen on this earth. As I said earlier, Jesus Christ himself set uh, the events in motion. He began everything. And so you to understand what I'm saying, we will go to the book of Revelation, chapter 4, and uh, begin reading at verse 1 through 11. So if Jesus Christ set the events in motion, the things that we're seeing coming upon the earth, we can't pray against those things. We can't pray against famine. We can't pray against diseases. We can't pray against earthquakes. All of these things that are happening. We can't pray against them and say, Lord, let these things not be. Because Jesus said they will be. Now, when it's against God's will or it's, or it's preventing uh, the, the glory of God from being known in the earth, we pray, we can pray for healing. We can pray uh, that God will, will cause a storm to stop. And those things, when God wants to reveal himself and he wants to be exalted, but just ordinarily praying that these things won't be in the earth, we can't pray against those things because the Lord said that these things will be. We read in the book of Revelation chapter one, uh, chapter four, uh, verse four through a uh, verse one through eleven. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, "Come up hither." And I will show you things which must take place after this. Listen, he said, I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one set on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty and four uh, thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, and the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes, round, around, and within. And they do not rest day nor night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before him saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Here we have a glimpse of heaven. And we see the sovereignty of God. We see the reverence of God given to him by the, the, the angels, by the, uh, the cherubim. The, you know, the four living creatures, and they ex exhorted him, they extolled him, amen, and they said that everything was created for his will, 
and for his purpose. Amen. So this is showing us that God is sovereign and that he has a purpose. He has a will and that he will fulfill his will in the earth. We read in Revelation chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. I'm just setting up a, 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 a picture here. So you, to, for you to understand and see that God is sovereign and that he does what pleases him. He doesn't do the things that we want him to do, but he does things that please him. Revelation 5, 1 through 10. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all of the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down, from, fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Amen. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. As we see here, when the Lord began, when he took the, uh, the scroll, amen, the, 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 the heavenly hosts were, were rejoicing with great joy because now they were, just like, you know, they were waiting for, the, uh, the kingdom of God to be fulfilled in the earth. They were longing for the kingdom of God to be fulfilled in the earth, just as we should be longing for the return of God. See, when we try to stand in the way of God and try to prevent what God is doing in the earth, we're, we're, we're standing against his will. These people were happy, amen, to see God begin to open the scroll and to loose uh, certain events that would come upon the earth. But it seems today that most in the body of Christ are not happy. Amen. Too many are too busy trying to build their own thrones, their own kingdoms, establish their own governments and different things of this nature. But these were waiting for the redemption. Amen. Of the Lord. They were happy. We continue on in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation. Amen. The Lord God is sovereign. Amen. And he does those things that please him. See, when you begin to think that you can speak your own destiny, you can change what God said would happen on the earth and you can turn it around and make it not be. You're deceiving yourself. See, this is another doctrine of devils that um, is being preached that the word of God uh, warns us of. When you can speak what you want to have happen into your uh, into your existence, you you know you can call upon the powers of the universe because this is all this is is a, a tag off of uh, the New Age doctrine. 
You have people like Napoleon Hill, a man who received uh, instructions from angelic beings, which were actually demons. And he wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. And a lot of Christians have picked up on this theology and they have uh, began to prosper in this thing, but they're prospering through the doctrines of devils. And so this is the danger that we fall into. Then we start to follow uh, books written by uh, Rhonda Bird, I believe, called The Secret. And all of these things, you know, where we can, you can think and you can create your own uh, uh, existence, create your own world. And then you have Christians, and it's really sad to see, you have Christians, believers in Christ, have f forgotten the word of God. And they have taken on the uh, theology and the terminology of the world. You know, the word of God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But you have a lot of Christians taking on the Hindu theology of karma. They don't, they don't quote the word of God, but they say karma. And they're quoting uh, and they're following Hindu religion. You see, the scripture says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So when you begin to lay aside of the word of God and you take on the world's ideology and the world's uh, uh, terminology, you begin to think like the world. And this is what we are seeing uh, happening in the Christian church today. So we have to, to stay away from those things, cease from doing those things and really get back to the word of God. And this is why a lot of the church cannot stand sound doctrine, because many are still seeking their own will. They have not died to themselves, but they're seeking their own will. God is sovereign here, here, and what he says will happen, will happen. Revelation chapter 6. We read, as Christ began to, uh, with each opening of the seals by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, events are put into motion. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say, saying with a loud voice, or with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked and beheld, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. I'm not going to elaborate on these. I'm just showing you as Jesus opened each seal, events began to happen. The second seal. When he had opened the second seal, I heard the living creatures saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to, one, to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him, a great soul. So as we see, and as you, if you would continue reading chapter 6 of Revelation, you will see that with the opening of each seal, something happened. And the events begin to, 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 to happen and stir up on the earth. And we are now living in some of these events that uh, the Lamb of God put into motions. So we can't pray against these events. We can't pray that these things uh, will not happen on the earth. So we can't pray away what Jesus has destined to happen. We can't declare and decree away what Jesus has said will come. We can't speak into the atmosphere what we desire when it's against the plan and purpose of the Lord God Almighty. When the Lord says shall, that means it will happen. He did not say might, most likely, or is possible. He said shall. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be, 
And what shall be or what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Verse 5 through 10. Jesus responded. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. I believe the King James Version uses the word shall. And he says, and you will or shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall or will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Amen. So Jesus said these things will happen. These events will take place. So we cannot stop these things uh, from happening. Uh, he said that, you know, there would be pestilence, earthquakes, uh, commotions against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, racial tension. All of these things the Lord said shall be or will happen as we enter or as we are living in the last days. And as I said, we can't pray these things away. We can't fast these things away. As the Lord said that they will happen, they will happen.